Championship team Birmingham City have officially appointed Wayne Rooney as their new manager. Now, I like Wayne Rooney as a coach, but it's been a bit hit and miss for him. Despite his best efforts, Derby were relegated and now they play in League One. And he has left DC United ninth in the MLS. But as we're recording this video, Birmingham are actually inside the playoffs in the championship. So that begs the question, can Rooney do well at Birmingham? Well, let's find out. As Rooney, we are going to manage Birmingham City and hopefully by the end of this video, we'll be making them the best team in the world. So this is the Birmingham team I've loaded into and honestly they do have a couple of key players on loan to them so that's something we've got to bear in mind going forward. And on top of that look at how many contracts are running out this year man. Financially we're going to take a hit through this. But we do have good players with the likes of defensive midfielder Christian Bealy, fullback Ethan Laird and of course Eugenio Bacunia. This team does have its bright sparks. But one thing I'm very concerned about look at the age of this team man. We've got an exceptionally old squad on our hands. So after properly looking at the team as a whole, it's definitely above average, but there's a lot of work to do. Now I'm going to keep this formation as it is because honestly, as you can see, there's only one person out of position and he's currently on loan to us anyway. As for the tactical vision, I want to use wing play. I think our wingers are pretty decent and I think this will work well for us in the championship at least. And we've already got two pretty solid coaches. I'd say we're off to a flying start. And after messing around with the team, this is probably the strongest start in 11, but as you can see, there are some glaring weaknesses. But Hull isn't one of them. He's only 18 years old, already 66 rated. I would love it if we could turn this guy into an absolute monster. But John Ruddy is definitely a weakness. 36 years old, 71 rated. His contract's running out. I think it's time for us to get a better keeper. And I'd say we've got one more good season from Long because he's 32 years old. He is 70 rated, but I can't see him lasting much longer than one season. Now, we do have 7 million to start our journey with Birmingham City. I don't think that's enough to do what I want with the team, but it'll have to do. Well, the first thing we've got to do is sort these contracts out because as you can see, if we don't, we're losing at least half of the squad. And these are the players' contracts I'm not going to be renewing. And you can kind of guess a pattern with these guys. They're all over 30 years old and I can't see us using these guys in the long term. And luckily, we've still got 6 million in our budget. I thought that would have cost way more. And I really think we've got to put all that money into bringing in a better keeper than Ruddy, man. Nothing else actually makes sense at the minute. Aside from Long and Hogan, nobody else in this starting 11 is above 30 years old. That means we can worry about Hogan and Long next year and the rest of the team will hopefully grow in overall as the season progresses. But the question is, who do we actually bring in to replace John Ruddy? Now, we could go for Bazunu, who's 21 years old, 71 rated, a recently relegated Southampton team who are actually below Birmingham in real life, so this is a viable option. We could also go for recently promoted Michael Cooper, 23 years old, 71 rated, again, Birmingham are above Plymouth in the league, and also Michael Cooper's a beast. Or we could go for Daniel Iverson, who's 25 years old, 74 rated, but Leicester City right now are running the championship so I don't think he'd want to drop down to Birmingham. All three of these are very good options, but I think I've made my mind off. And if you guys guessed Michael Cooper, you are absolutely wrong, as I went for Gavin Bazunu, who cost us just over four and a half million. And I've also sent a fair few players out on loan in the hopes that where they'll go, they'll get game time. But we've only got 600k in the budget. We're not doing anything with that money, so that's our transfer window done. Which means this is the team going into Season 1, and honestly, boys, this is a very solid team to start off with. There's a lot of players in this team that have got the potential to grow massive amounts this year man i'm expecting a lot of growth now as we're recording this video birmingham are sixth in the league now obviously i'm not expecting us to get the playoffs with this team but i definitely like to think we'd be up there but as we're simulating through season one if you wouldn't mind dropping this video a like and hitting that subscribe button that would be amazing so boys it's the first of june season one is done so let's go see if we've done as well as they are doing in real life 18th in the league man that is not at all how i thought this season would go I mean, we were nowhere near the relegation zone, which I guess is at least a bonus. But realistically, we should be doing way better with that with the team we've got. We made it to round three of the FA Cup, getting knocked out by Brentford. And we only made it to round two of the Carabao Cup. I think I'm only going to show you guys these competitions when we actually start doing well in them. But looking at our squad, boys, I don't know how we've done so poorly, man. I'm willing to bet that teams that have finished above us have got a way worse team than us. But it was Koji Mayoshi who got 12 goals, 10 assists and 48 games. That's not bad, to be fair, considering where we finished. I've got to admit, boys, season one has been a disaster. Wayne Rooney, man, we've got to step it up, mate. This team is definitely capable of getting the playoffs next year. We've got to bounce back massively, improve the team where we need to improve it, and then we'll see what happens. So we're now into our second year in charge of Birmingham, and we got 10 million in our budget, man. That is a brilliant start to the season. And when you look at the team, boys, there's only one position I realistically want to put all of that money into. I want to 
Once a better winger than Anderson, he's almost 30 years old, he's 70 rated, he's the weakest link in the team. Now I bet you're wondering why I don't want to improve anywhere else in this pitch, well there's a very goddamn good reason why. When you look at the average age of the players in the team, it's about mid-twenties at best. And despite our poor finish in the season last year, this team massively improved overall. And with the likes of Ethan there, who's only 22 years old, our centre-back Iwu, who's only 23 years old, and our attacking midfielder Hall, who's only 19 years old, I really want to give them one more year before I start bringing an influx of players into the team. And due to the fact we've got 10 million in the budget, I reckon even after a poor showing last year, we can bring in a really good winger. Now we could go for Chris Willock, he's 26 years old, 74 rated, I'd argue he's probably one of the best wingers in the championship right now. We could also go for Aitor, he's 28 years old, 75 rated last year with Panathinaikos, he was an absolute monster for us. Or we could go for Matez Jurasek, he's only 20 years old and already 75 rated, this guy looks pretty good. They are all really good choices but I think you guys know exactly who I'm going for. And if you guys guessed Matez Jurasek, you were absolutely right as we spent 8.9 million bringing him to Birmingham City. And as you can see boys, we've got 140k left in our budget man, we're not doing anything else this season. But that does mean the team looks like this going into our second year in charge of Birmingham and I definitely think we've got a chance of promotion this year. There's obviously a lot of room for improvement but I've got a stupid amount of faith in this team that by the end of this season they'll grow stupid amounts once again. Now last year we did finish 18th in the league. That's completely unacceptable. If we do fail to make the playoffs, we've at least got to finish inside the top 10. So boys, we're at the end of yet another campaign and we were so close, man. Six points outside the playoffs. Sheffield United, man, just do one. But at least this time we finished 8th in the league, man. It's a far cry from where we finished last year. And we made it to round four of the FA Cup this time, only to get knocked out by Port Vale. Poor Vale. Looking at this team, boys, I'm genuinely curious on how we haven't managed promotion yet. What do we need to do? But Jurasek and Miyoshi are our two best players this time. 17 and 3 for Jurasek and 16 and 3 for Miyoshi. I'm not gonna lie, boys, after seeing how good the team is, I'm very disappointed. We should have easily got a top six finish. But next year, without doubt, we have to get promotion, whether that be by playoffs automatically, I don't care. The team we've got now is way too good to be in the championship. So it's now time for season three of Birmingham City and we are still in the championship. I still can't believe we didn't get promoted last year having seen the team. Now, having properly looked at this starting 11, there's a couple of positions we need to focus on. For starters, I think we need a stronger striker than Burke. He is 74 rated, almost 30 years old. I think it'd bode well for us if we got a better striker. And we need a better sense about than Sanderson. He's 73 rated, the weakest link in the team, and we definitely need a stronger defence. I genuinely think once we sort those positions out, we're not only going to get promotion, we're going to get it automatically. And we've got 11 million in our budget man big up Tom Brady for believing in me and started with the striker I'm going for Daryl Dark he's 75 rated he's 6 foot 2 as well we put him on the right development plan he will turn into a beast and boys for 6 million pounds on the dot we have got Daryl Dark on a 4 year deal and there he is Daryl Dark is in the starting 11 but we do have a slight problem we've only got 2 million left in the budget after signing Daryl Dark and renewing everybody's contracts so if we do want to bring a centre back into the team there's only one way we're going to do it we're going to have to go into the free agent system to see what they've got. And what they have is a centre-back called Lazar Berardiz, who's 21 years old, 77 rated. Boys, I think we dropped on an absolute hidden jemmy. And we've only got half a mil left in the budget, so that's our transfer window done. But the team now looks like this going into season three, and I'm just putting this out there. If we don't get promotion with this team, I officially give off. I mean, let's be real, boys. Half of these players by the end of the season will be touching 80 rated. I'm honestly praying, boys, that FC24 doesn't screw me over and we actually get what we deserve, and that is promotion. Well, that's the end of our third season in charge of Birmingham, and we finally got promotion, man. Not only have we got promotion, we got promotion as champions. It took us long enough, though, didn't it? Three bloody seasons, but you know what? We've done it. And we actually made it to the quarter of the FA Cup, only getting knocked out by Chelsea. You know what? I'll definitely take that. But we only made it to round three of the Carabao Cup, getting knocked out by bloody Palace. I mean, that swings and roundabouts, isn't it? But just look at the team, for goodness sake. I don't think we're going to be in a relegation battle next year at all. But look at the stats, man, especially Jurisset with 23 goals, 9 assists and 50 games. This guy is going to be an absolute beast for us in the future, isn't he? Now, I've just realised I signed Daryl Dart from West Brom, who are massive rivals to Birmingham City. Oh, man, you guys are going to absolutely rinse me for that, aren't you? But you know what? I don't care. We are promoted to the Premier League at long bloody last and nobody's taking that away from me. But depending on the budget, we could actually go for top 10 football in our first season, man. This team is no joke at all. 
Liverpool. So it's now our fourth season in charge of Birmingham City and it's official we are finally in the Premier League. And we've got the budget to match it to 77 million at once again. Big up Tom Brady. Now when you take a look at the team, I mean overall it's actually pretty solid. But I kind of want to focus on this defence a bit more. If we have a solid defence, we'll do pretty well in the Prem. So that means we're getting a better centre-back for Iwu and we're getting a better full-back than Buchanan because as much as I don't want to, I feel like we've got to. But we do have 77 million, so once we sorted those positions out, if there's any money left over, we'll revisit the team and see where we can further improve it. Now, starting with the fullback, I'm going for Ian Matson from Chelsea. He's only 24 and he's 81 rated. I feel like we can turn this guy into an absolute monster. And boys, we got a fantastic deal, only having to spend 27.3 million to bring him to Birmingham City. As for the centre-back, I'm going for Nicolo Casale from RC Lens. He's 28 years old, 82 rated. I think he'll complete our defensive lineup quite nicely. And boys, for 23 million on the dot, we have got Casale on a five-year contract. But after that signing and renewing everybody's contracts, we've only got 12 million left in our budget. The one thing I do want to do is bring in a better second-choice keeper, though, because if anything happens to Bazunu, we've got Gcock, and he is just not good enough. And even with 12 million in the budget, I'm pretty certain we can find someone. And we have found someone. We found Ruben Blanco from Luton Town, 77 rated, 31 years old. He will definitely do the job. And that is our transfer window done and dusted as we've signed Ruben Blanco for 5.5 million on a three-year deal. And now the team looks like this going into our first season in the Premier League. And honestly, even the source bench doesn't look too bad when you take everything into consideration. Now you guys know me by now, I'm realistic. I'm definitely not expecting anything spectacular. But one thing I'm definitely expecting is for us to be nowhere near the relegation zone come the end of this season because this team is way too good for that. So boys, it's the 1st of June. Our first season in the Prem is done. So let's go see how we actually did. God, we finished ninth in the league, man, in our first season in the Prem. That is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, we didn't finish above Aston Villa, but we did finish above Leeds United. So you know what? I'll definitely take that. We once again made it to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. This time we getting knocked out by United. But we only made it to round two of the Carabao Cup. I mean, this is just one competition overall I'm not good at. But just look how good this team has become, man. I'm telling you now, boys, European football ain't too far away. One player I'm especially proud of is George Hall, 22 years old, 85 overall. I mean, we've officially completed our objective, man. We've turned this guy into a beast. And stats-wise, Drew Set got 16 and 2, Miyoshi got 13 and 3, and Daryl Dyer got 10 and 1. As far as first seasons go in the top flight of football when you get promoted, this is probably one of the best you can get. And with the team looking like this, I'm telling you now, boys, a couple of really good signings next year, budget depending, and we've definitely got a very strong chance at getting European football, maybe even as early as next season. So it's now our fifth year in charge of Birmingham City, and as you can see, I've been a little bit busy sorting the coaches out. But we've actually got less money to work with this time, 62 million. I thought last year's performance would have given us more, but you know what, Tom Brady turns out you're a cheapskate. Now when you take a look at the starting 11, there's a couple of positions that are screaming for improvement. We could do with a better DM partnership than Bakunia and Bielik because they are a couple of the weakest links in the team. And that goes for Miyoshi as well. I really do like this guy, but again, he's one of the weakest links in the team. And to be honest, boys, so is Daryl Dyer, but the problem is that 60 odd million isn't enough to cover all four bases. We've got to choose two positions to improve and two only. And honestly, I think I'm going to go for the DMs because attacking, we're actually pretty solid. Defensively, though, we could be a little bit better. If we do have any money left over, we'll either bring in a winger or a striker, but I really can't see that being the case. But our first sign is going to be Danilo from Nottingham Forest. He's only 26 years old and already 82 rated. Him alone will massively improve the quality in that midfield. And to be honest, I think we really mugged Steve Cooper off because we've just spent 26 million to bring Danilo to us. I mean, that's a bargain. And our second and most likely final sign in this window is going to be Salis Abdul Samed, who's 27 years old, 82 rated. I think him and Danilo are going to make an amazing defensive midfielder partnership. And even with his contract running out, we still had to pay 22 and a half million for him. And after those signings renewing everybody's contracts, we've got 12 million left in the budget. So I think it's safe to say we're not doing anything else. But this is now the starting 11 going into season five. And it is very safe to say, boys, I'm confident in this team. There's only two players players below 80 rated and I reckon by the end of this season they'll be over 80 rated anyway. But this will prove whether last year was a fluke or not. Last year we got a top 10 finish with a weaker team than this so theoretically speaking this team should surely get us European football. So boys season 5 is wrapped up and you ain't gonna believe this. We 
we've got Champions League football for next season, man. We're second in the league. We're only one point away from actually winning the title. We beat United, Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea, Leeds, Newcastle, all to this second place spot, man. We have built a monstrosity with Birmingham. We also made it to round five of the FA Cup to lose to bloody Bradford City. I mean, how does that even happen? And we made it to round four of the Carabao Cup, this time losing to Brighton. Now, that I can kind of understand. But just look at the team. I'm really not surprised we've done so well. This squad is ridiculous. And Daryl Dark is our top goal scorer this time with 20 goals, 2 assists and 42 games. Sorry West Bromwich Albion fans, but he's doing well for us. So the second year in the Prem has been incredible. Second in the league, man. We've got Champions League football for next season, for God's sake. And looking at the team, boys, if we do get a good budget, I genuinely think we take the Champions League by storm and maybe even get to the final. So it's now our sixth season in charge of Birmingham City and we've got 125 million to spend. It's about bleeding time we got this sort of money and when you look at the team honestly boys all over the pitch it's fantastic but there's a couple of positions i'd really like to improve i hate to say it but we need a better winger than miyoshi he's 79 rated he's one of the weakest links in the team right now it's time for him to step aside and make way for somebody else and whilst he was our top goal scorer last year daryl dyke realistically hasn't performed as well as i wanted to so i think it's time to get a better striker as well and with 125 million i definitely feel like we'll have no issue sorting those two positions out and starting with the right winger role, I'm going for Ernest Nuwama from Stade de Reims. He's 24 years old and 84 rated. I feel like this is an absolute no-brainer. And he is our most expensive signing yet, as we've just spent 59 million on the dot to bring Ernest Nuwama to Birmingham City. As for the striker, I'm going for Sergio Camalo from Brighton. He's 27 years old, 85 rated. He plays for Brighton for God's sake. He's bound to do well for us. And that is our transfer window done, as we've just spent 58.5 million to bring him to Birmingham City. And now the team does look like this good in to season six and it's very safe to say i am happy with this team man we've already established ourselves as a top team in england now it's time to do the exact same but in europe but before we get to the champions league we're in the community shield final against man city i can only assume they not only won the prem but the fa cup and because we finished second we're now playing against them but what a statement it would be if we went on to beat them to win our fi oh my god boys that is a massive win. But moving on to the Champions League, we're in Group H alongside Villarreal, RB Leipzig and RB Salzburg. And I'm not going to lie to you, boys. If we don't top this group with flying colours, there is something seriously wrong. So, boys, we've just arrived halfway through the season and we are seventh in the league, man. But you know what? I'm actually not too fussed because between ourselves and third place, there's only four points anyway. In between us and third place is Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest and Palace. I cannot imagine them keeping up this form until June. And we have indeed topped the group and we go to the knockouts pretty easily. And in fairness, boys, so far the stats aren't really that impressive, but Nuama is our top goal scorer so far. And we've only got 6 million left in the budget, so realistically we can't use that to improve the team. Which does mean this is the starting 11 going into the knockouts for the very first time. Again, man, I can't explain how happy I am about Hall 90 rated. We've turned him into one of the best players in the world, for God's sake. Now, obviously, it depends on who we get drawn up against in the round of 16, but I can and genuinely see this start 11 surprising a lot of teams along the way. And just look who we've got first, man. PSG. I mean, really? PSG first? It doesn't help when a few key players are absolutely knackered, man. We are away from home in the first like Birmingham City. Don't let me down. It's a one-all draw. That's basically as good as a win away from home against PSG. The team is actually looking really good for the second leg, and we are at home as well, so we have got the home advantage this time, and it pays off. Oh my my god, 3-1, Kamalo and Hall getting the goals to put us through to the quarters, knocking PSG out. We're up next is Real Madrid, and I'm not going to lie, I really fancy our chances. That team isn't strong at all. We're turning the first leg too, I really fancy our chances. We could get a result, okay. It's a nil-nil draw. I mean, I definitely would have preferred a win. I feel like we should have got a win, to be honest, but at least we aren't losing. The team is knackered for the second leg, and we're away from home at the Bernabeu. This isn't looking good for us, man. We need a miracle, and we get one! Kamalo, boys, we've only bought him this season, and he has already proven to us why that was a really good friggin' idea. And in the semi-finals, it's Barca freaking Lona. We go from one Spanish giant to the bloody next. But thankfully, majority 
majority of the team are looking decent. We are a team in the face like this is the chance to take a 2-1 advantage. Ethan led in the 85th and Kam Kamalo once again, boys. He is an absolute machine. We have the advantage in the second leg, but we are away from home. This is Barca's playground. We've got to hold on. And that's exactly what we do. 4-3 on aggregate, boys. We have taken Birmingham City to the Champions League final as Wayne Rooney, of course. PSG, Real Madrid, Barcelona, and now Bayern Munich in the Champions League final, man. We have truly had one of the most difficult knockout runs I think I've ever had in my time being a YouTuber. We're in the Prem. We were woeful. 11th in the league, man. We even finished below the ball drops, for God's sake. But taking a second look, there's only four points separating ourselves from fifth place Newcastle United. This one's been a weird season. We also made it to the quarters of the FA Cup before getting knocked out by bloody form of all teams. And we made the quarters of the Carabao Cup before getting knocked out by Liverpool. Honestly, boys, domestically, we just aren't good, are we? And I'll be real, boys, the stats are absolutely shocking. No wonder we've had a bad season. Nobody could bloody score. Well, the good news is we've got no suspensions or injuries for the Champions League final, man, so at least we're going into it with our strongest start in 11. And more importantly, we have dragged a couple of Birmingham City players to the final, like Ethan Laird, you Cannon, me Yoshi, and of course the Wonder Kid himself, Hall, 92 overall. I am so happy we've actually made this happen. Now, admittedly, we've barely won any trophies. We've won the championship and we've won the community shield, but now we've got the chance to win the biggest one we can win at club level, the Champions League. Jurisic's on the ball, and I was looking for that one too. He's got it as well. Jurisic is in behind. We could make it 1 0 quite early on it. Oh my days. That is an abysmal effort. Rico Lewis against Ian Matson. Oh, we have just been done for a kipper there. What was I thinking? Jimenez, they're in behind now by Nuni. What a save from Bazunu. Nuama's on the ball on the right hand side of the pitch. Jesus, this guy can move. Oh my God, look at the pace on him. Nope. Oh my days. That's be oh, by him. No, oh my days. Come on. That's screaming for a goal. I won't lie, that first half was woeful, but we've got a chance to make the second half better here. Jurisic is on the ball. Can he find Kamalo? Kamalo, cutting inside. This has got to be 1-0, surely. Denied. Oh, my God. Why can't we score? Oh, Bayern Munich are in. Bayern Munich are in. Oh, what, what is... Right, okay. Couple of things there. How did Musiala get that ball so easily? And what the bloody hell was Bazunu doing? Let's just have a look at this again, man. Bazunu is in absolute no man's land. And our defending there is just not good enough. Birmingham City, man. Wake the pissing hell up, for goodness sake. Okay, Nuama's on the ball. Okay, this is good. We Oh, we've got to get past Sula, surely. Please. Oh, my days. It's the last touch every single time, man. Where's the composure? Danilo, can we spot that run over? That's a fantastic... Ball. Lewis Hall, bring it down. That's a beautiful bit of play. Come on, Lewis Hall. You've got everything you need. Make it... Oh, my days. What do we have to do to put one in the back of the net, man? Okay, go back post. That's a beautiful ball. Surely that's it. That is the goal that we needed. That corner technique is absolutely fantastic. And every single time I've used it, it's bloody worked. We go short with the corner. Jurisic goes inside the box, goes back post. Nobody's with him. Open net practically. One apiece. The question is now, boys, can we get a winner inside the 90 minutes? Okay, to answer that question, no. No, we can't. I swear pretty much every Champions League final goes to extra time these days, man. I can never actually win the game in normal time. Danilo's on the ball now. This is decent. Oh, that's a great touch from Kamalo. Can we see that run? Yes, we can. Please, make this to... Oh, my God, that is fantastic. Jurisek has put us 2-1 up in extra time. That is a fantastic bit of play as well. Kamalo lays it off to Jurisek. Jurisek puts it top right bins and Birmingham City are leading in the final. Oh my, what is that? You have got to be kidding me. That defending, oh my God. Near post corner, surely to God my defend. What is Bazunu doing there? Why aren't you on your line? I'm not being funny. We've conceded two goals in this final and both of them, you could argue Bazunu was at fault. The first one, he was in no man's land. And the second one, what was he playing at there for God's sake? But we've got a chance here with Nuama. Can we cut inside? He's still got the ball. That's fantastic. Surely this is it. Surely. Thank you. And who is it? Of course, it was going to be George Hall, the wonder kid from season one. Who is We've made an absolutely incredible player has put us 3-2 up in the final and surely to God that has got to be the winner. We have got less than five minutes to hold on to this lead man. Surely we're not that bad at defending that we're going to concede in the next five minutes. Dying seconds of the game. Bayern Munich are in behind for God's sake. Not like what? Oh my God. I thought that was him. Bazunu, great save. We're going to clear this and that 
is the full-time whistle. As Wayne Rooney, we have taken Birmingham City all the way from the Championship to winning the Champions League. We have made them the best team in the world. It did take us long enough though, boys. Six years in total. We were stuck in the Championship for bloody three seasons, but in the end, as always, we bloody did it. And if you are still here, thank you so much for watching this video, but if you enjoyed that, you should definitely click here to watch me rebuild Stoke City with free agents only.